Hi there, it's Mrs. Ferris from Wood Library with my friend Bernard, and we're ready for some bedtime stories. So get cozy, turn on your listening ears, and let's find our first book. Now our first book I picked especially for tonight because it's about going to school. It's called School's First Day of School. This is written by Adam Rex with pictures by Christian Robinson, and it's published by Roaring Book Press. And if you look at this picture, you see there's some construction going on because this is a brand new school. That summer, they dug up the big field and poured the foundation and set brick on top of brick until they built a school. A sign above the door read Frederick Douglass Elementary. That's a good name for me, thought the school. Most days, a man named Janitor came to mop the school and buff his floors and wash his windows. This is nice, the school said to the Janitor. Just the two of us. Oh, won't be just the two of us for long, said Janitor. Soon the teachers will come, and then you'll be filled with children. The school creaked. Children? Oh, all kinds of children. They'll come to play games and to learn. Oh, said the school. Will you be here? Oh, you'll see me after the school day is over, said Janitor. But don't worry, you'll like the children. But the school thought the janitor was probably wrong about that. And then they came. The children came and there were more of them than the school could possibly have imagined. Look at them all, coming on their big yellow bus. They got everywhere. They opened and closed all of his doors and lockers, drank water from his fountains, and played on his jungle gym. So that's what that's for, thought the school. Some of the older kids gathered by the school's back fence and showed each other their bored faces. Can you make a bored face? <laughs> this place stinks, said one, and the school gasped. <gasps> I hate school, said another with puffy hair to the agreement of his friends. The school sagged a little. Hmm. And one very small girl with freckles didn't want to come inside the school at all. Her mother had to carry her. I must be awful, the school whispered to himself. Later, he squirted the puffy haired kid in the face, but then he felt bad afterwards. He watched the kindergarten children sit on one of his rugs. The teacher said, as we go around the circle, please tell us your name. So there was an Aiden, and a Max, and a Bella, and another Aiden, and an Emily, and a Caden, and a Chloe. Now the small girl with freckles was next, but she wouldn't speak. She only stared at her shoes until the teacher moved on. I don't like school, whispered, she whispered into her lap. Well, thought the school. Maybe it doesn't like you either. Now the children were in their chairs, finally. But just as the school was starting to relax, oh, his fire alarm sounded and all the children exited and walked to the other side of the field and stared at him. He was so embarrassed. He held his doors open for them when they returned. Sorry, he said as the first child entered. Sorry. Sorry, 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 he told them all, even the little girl with the freckles. At 12 o'clock, the school was filled with food. And at 12.30, the school was filled with garbage. At one table, a boy told a funny joke and another boy laughed so hard that, oh my goodness, milk came out of his nose. Now I'm covered with nose milk, thought the school and he had to admit that it was a pretty funny joke. Even the girl with the freckles liked it. 
After lunch, the kindergarten kids learned about shapes. A rectangle has four sides, said the teacher. One, two, three, four. And a square has four sides too. In fact, a square is actually a special kind of rectangle. Wow, said the school. I didn't know that. Afterward, the children made pictures with glitter and paste. The girl with freckles made a picture of the school. Ooh, it looks just like me, thought the school, except glittery. It's like she's known me all my life. Do you think I could have your picture? The teacher asked her. Don't tell anyone, but I think it's the best. The school thought she was probably right about that. The freckled girl smiled when the teacher stuck her drawing onto the school wall with a push pin. Ouch, said the school, but he didn't mind, not really. At three o'clock, the parents came to pick up the children. And at 3.30, janitor came to pick up the school. I was full of kids, the school told him, and I learned a joke, and I accidentally had a fire drill, but everybody was nice about it, and I listened to a classroom, and I learned about shapes. You had a big day, said janitor. Do you think, the school said, do you think you can invite everyone to come back tomorrow? Especially that little freckled girl? Janitor nodded. I'll see what I can do. And later, Janitor sat on top of the school and together they watched the sun go down. In the beginning, said the school, I didn't know what I was. I thought I was your house. Nope, said Janitor. I, I suppose some other place gets to be your house, the school added. And janitor nodded, that's true, but you get to be a school and that's lucky. And the school thought he was probably right about that. Don't you? I never thought a school could be afraid on the first day of school, but I guess that one was. Well, let's do a finger play about, hmm. Anybody have an idea which one you wanna do first? I don't hear you. Of course, I don't think I could hear you. But, well, let's do, hmm, let's cook some hot dogs. I've got five little hot dogs they are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So hide one away. Four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bang. Well, our next book is by Dog. It's called Picture Book by Dog. It's written and illustrated by Michael Ralph and is published by Little Brown and Company. Oh, look at that. He even draws the pictures. Hello, my name is Dog, and I made you this book. I'd like to share my story. Won't you have a look? I was lost before we met. On my own, I roamed around, hungry, wet, and searching for the home I never found. Some caring people picked me up and took me somewhere dry. They washed and groomed me, gave me food. But sometimes I'd still cry. Even though the place was full, I often felt alone. I dreamed I had a special friend. I wished I had a home. 
the day you opened up my cage, I first thought, oh, could this be? Of all the dogs to choose from, why on earth did you choose me? You brought me home and gave me many toys, a leash, a bed, three tennis balls, a collar, and a bowl to keep me fed. Now first I had to find out what to chew and not to chew. And then I learned the hard way where to poo and not to poo. Back then, you were my teacher. You taught me good from bad. We snuggled, played, explored the world. Now, you're the friend I'd never had. I look forward to the times ahead when you'll grow big one day and I'll be an old and happy dog with fur that's turning gray. We'll remember all our favorite times and I think we'll both agree that the reason life has been so sweet is because we are family. He writes a pretty good book, doesn't he? Indeed. Well, another finger play. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out? Shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out? Clap. Clap, clap your crazies out. Clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out? Stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out. Stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Do you want to stand up for the next one? because we're going to jump, jump, jump your jiggles out. Jump, jump, jump your jiggles out. Jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out? Shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. So we had a story about a dog that got found and loved. And I understand cats want equal time. So we're going to do one called Scrawny Cat. This is written by Phyllis Root and illustrated by Allison Friend. And it's published by Candlewick Press. Now a scrawny cat crept down the street. He was lonely. He was little. He was lost. He had belonged to someone else, and she had belonged to him. Someone who picked him up and scratched his ears and let him lick her chin. Someone who knew his name. But now, now everyone called him, get out of here. But the scrawny cat knew his name was not get out of here. The wind hurried the scrawny cat along. 
He hunkered in a doorway where good smells drifted out. Maybe someone would let him inside and give him something warm to eat. But when the door opened, a man yelled, Get out of here! So he got. So the scranny, scrawny cat bolted down the street straight into a big dog. Grrr, growled the dog. And the skittery, scrawny cat raced away all the way back to the dock. Grrr, growled the big dog right behind. And what else could the scared little scrawny cat do? He leaped into a dinghy just as kaboom. Rain plummeted down and the big dong rag away. A dinghy is a little boat, in case you didn't know. The scrawny cat huddled under the dinghy seat. Up and down, up and down, the dinghy rocked on the waves, just the way someone used to rock the scrawny cat in a chair. The tuckered out scrawny cat put his head on his paws and fell asleep. The wind blew and the waves crashed. The rope tying the dinghy to the dock snapped. And when the scrawny cat woke up, all he saw was water, water everywhere. Poor, shivery, scrawny cat. He lapped the rainwater in the bottom of the dinghy and wished his stomach didn't chew on his ribs. Oh. Well, at last the sun came up, golden across the waves. And up ahead, just where the boat was headed, the scrawny cat saw a rock and a tree and a house in the sand. A woman came out of the house. She had been a sailor once, but her ship had crashed on the rocks and she had built a little house for herself and settled down to catch fish and gather seaweed and pick berries. But sometimes, sometimes she missed sailing the open sea and all by herself, she got a little bit lonely. Now she came down to the shore to see what the storm had blown in. The scrawny cat hunched under the dinghy seat. Would the woman throw things at him and call him get out of here? The dinghy grated on the sand. The woman reached down and picked the scrawny cat up. How did you get way out here all by yourself? The woman said. You must be quite the sailor cat. Well, the woman took the scrawny cat inside her house and she rubbed him down with a towel and put a bowl of fish stew on the floor for him. The scrawny cat lapped up the stew until his stomach was round and full. The woman picked him up again would she throw him out the door? Not at all. She sat in a rocking chair and scratched the scrawny cat's ears. I've been waiting for some company, she said. And here you come, sailing in like a regular skipper. The scrawny cat purred. Skipper, she said. That's what I'll call you. I'm Emma. Skipper purred harder and licked Emma under the chin. And if you're lucky enough to go sailing someday far out to sea, you might see them together, Skipper and Emma. Skipper isn't scrawny anymore. He is a real sailor cat now. But best of all, Skipper belongs to Emma, and Emma belongs to Skipper. Isn't that a nice one? I'm so happy that, that little cat found a house.
just like the dog did, right? Well, why don't we have, hmm, some monkeys who are going to jump on our bed. I've got five little monkeys who are jumping on the bed. When one fell off, oh, he bumped his head. But his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So hide one away. Four little monkeys were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So three little monkeys are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So two little monkeys are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So that leaves one little monkey who is jumping on the bed. When she fell off, oh, she bumped her head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So there are no more monkeys, but we do have another story. And this is called, What the Ladybug Heard. This is by one of my favorite authors, Julia Donaldson, and it's illustrated by Lydia Monks. And this book is published by Henry Holden Company. And there, right there, is the ladybug. And this is a rhyming story. Once upon a farm, there lived a fat red hen. Can you find her? There. A duck in a pond and a goose in a pen. A woolly sheep, a hairy hog, a handsome herd, horse and a dainty dog and a fine prize cow and two cats that purred and a ladybug way over here who never said a word. Well, the cow said moo and the hen said cluck. Hiss, said the goose and quack, said the duck. Nay, said the horse. Oink, said the hog. Ba, said the sheep. Woof, said the dog. Now one cat meowed, meow, while the other one purred. And the ladybug never said a word. But the ladybug saw and the ladybug heard. She saw two men in a big black van with a map and a key and a cunning plan. And she heard them whisper, this is how we're going to steal that fine prize cow. We'll open the gate in the dead of night, go past the horse and then Turn right, round the duck pond, past the hog. Be careful not to wake the dog. Left past the sheep, and then straight ahead, and through the door to the prize cow's shed. Then, help, was the ladybug's very first word and gather round were the second and third. And she told the animals, why this is how two thieves are planning to steal the cow. They'll open the gate in the dead of night, pass the horse and then turn right. Round the duck pond, pass the hog, being careful not to wake the dog. Left past the sheep and then straight ahead and in through the door of the prize cow shed. There she is sitting there, do you see her? Finally talking? Well, the cow said, moo, 
And the hen said, Quack! Hiss! said the goose. Quack! said the duck. Nay! said the horse. Oink! said the hog. Ba! said the sheep. And woof! said the dog. And both the cats began to meow. We can't let them steal the fine prize cow. But the ladybug told them not to fear. Where is she? There she is right there. She whispered in all of their ears. She whispered her plan in every ear. And in the dead of night, the two bad men, there was Hefty Hugh and Lanky Len. Now they opened the gate while the farmer slept and tiptoed in to the farm they crept. Then the goose said, I'm going to surprise you. Nay! With all her might. And Led said, That's the horse. We turn right. And the dainty dog began to quack. That's the duck, said Hugh. We're right on track. Oink, oink, said the cats. There goes the hog. Now be careful, said the thieves. Don't wake the dog. Ba 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 said the fat red hen. The sheep were nearly there, said Len. Then the duck in the pond said, Moo, moo, moo. Two more steps to go, said Hefty Hugh. And they both stepped into the duck pond. Splosh! And the farmer woke and said, golly gosh. And he called the cops and they caught the men. Yes, Hefty Hugh and Lanky Len. Then the cow said, moo. And the hen said, cluck. And hiss, said the goose. And quack, said the duck. Nay, said the horse. Oink, said the hog. Ba, said the sheep. Woof, woof, said the dog. And the farmer cheered, and both cats purred. But the ladybug never said a word. She did all her talking when she needed to, didn't she? If you ever come into the library, there are a couple other books about this ladybug. One, when she heard something else, and another one when she heard something at the zoo. They're both fun. We've cooked our hot dogs, and we've shaken our sillies. We've had monkeys jumping on the bed. Do you think it's time for some bubble gum? Reach in your pocket. And if you don't have a pocket and whatever you're wearing, just pretend you do and pull out a piece of pretend bubble gum. We're going to unwrap it and pop the gum in our mouths. We're going to chew it up until it's soft and squishy and do something disgusting with it. Are you ready? Let's chew. You must be ready, don't you think? So, are you ready to be a little disgusting? Put your hand out and spit your gum in it. Ooh. And then clap your hand on top. And now your hands are stuck together with sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. Do we want to leave it there? I don't think so. So what do we have to say? Do you remember the word? We're going to say unstick together. Here we go. Unstick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. 
on stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. On stick. Come on back. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. All right. Well, let's have our flannel board today. get it straight on there. Actually, I think I'll turn it this way. Right. I think you'll be able to see. And we're going to have a hill with a hole in it. There was a hole, was in a hill, and the green grass grows all around, all around, and the green grass grows all around. And in this hole, there was a tree. I was wondering if I had put that up too high. There we go. Let's do this like this. The prettiest tree that you ever did see. Now the tree's in the hole, and the hole's in the hill, and the green grass grows all around, all around, and the green grass grows all around. And on this tree, there is a limb. The prettiest limb that you ever did see. The limbs on the tree and the trees in the hole and the holes in the hill and the green grass grows all around, all around. The green grass grows all around. And on that limb, there is a branch. The prettiest branch that you ever did see. The branches on the limb and the limbs on the tree and the trees in the hole and the holes in the hill and the green grass grows all around, all around. The green grass grows all around. And on this branch, there is a nest, the prettiest nest that you ever did see. The nests on the branch and the branch on the limb and the limb on the tree and the tree in the hole and the hole in the hill and the green grass grows all around, all around. The green grass grows all around. And in that nest, there was an egg, the prettiest egg that you ever did see. Well, the eggs in the nests and the nests on the branch and the branches on the limb and the limbs on the tree and the trees in the hole, the holes in the hill and the green grass grows all around, all around. The green grass grows all around. That's an old, old song. And we're going to finish up then with a Sandra Boynton book like we usually do. And this one is pajama time. Do you have your jammies on yet? I do. This is published by Workman Publishing. Look at them all in their jammies. Well, the moon is up. It's getting late. So let's get ready to celebrate. It's pajama time. So pull on the bottoms, put on the top, get yourself set to pajama de bop. It's pajama time. Now, some are old and some are new. Some are red. Do you recognize? That's my friend Bernard in this book. And some are blue. Some are fuzzy and some are not. But we can all pajama in whatever we've got. It's pajama time. Now, some are pink and some are green, and some 
are the ugliest we've ever seen. They may be stripy or polka dot, but we can all pajami in whatever we've got. It's pajama time. So jammy to the left and jammy to the right. Jamma, 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 PJ. Everybody's wearing them for dancing tonight. Jamma, 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 PJ. Now all around the room, in one big line, wearing our pajamas and looking so fine. Then hop into bed and turn out the light. You can have a party in your dreams tonight. It's pajama time. Hush, hush. It's pajama time. Hush, hush. It's pajama time. Shh. Good night. Sleep tight. And I hope I'll see you next week for some bedtime stories.